Hey everybody, it's Synth Designer back again with another video. Today we're going to be continuing our series on Serum 2 and I'll be showing you how to use the sample features. For those of you who did not see my previous episode, I am going to be taking you through all the features of Serum 2, both new and continued from Serum 1. And this is just going to be a general guide on how to use Serum 2 as well as just a overview of the entire synth. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. If you're not familiar with Serum 2, we have a whole bunch of new ways of creating sounds. Whereas before we had wavetables and then we had kind of our noise and uh, sub oscillators, we now have wavetables, multi-sample, sample, granular, and spectral. Today I'm gonna to be focusing on the sample feature Another episode soon will be the multi-sample, and they do vary in very specific ways. Now you might be thinking, what, what is this? Like, why is there a sample and a multi-sample? Well, the sample is essentially one sound that is sampled, and multi-sample is what you might think it is. It's the same sound, but it's sampled multiple times across the frequency spectrum, and that makes a difference. So in this case, Say we take a basic sound, so we're going to take from the factory sounds here, we'll take a brass sound. So we have this brass sound, we can go through them all. We have something like this. So we have a whole bunch of different samples, but as you can see, no matter what note I press, it's all based around that one sample. If you multi-sample something, then you are essentially recording something in different notes and that gives it a different capability to have a little bit more of a realistic kind of sound. I'm not going to get into all the details, but essentially one sampled sound versus multi-sampled sounds is basically what you would think it is like I explained. I will go into more detail on multi-samples in my next episode, so let's focus on just the samples for now. I really hope you also stick to the end because I'm going to show you kind of a hidden feature that I'm not sure is being talked about very much, but I'm going to show you in the end. So for now, let's look at just the basic sample features here. So as you saw before, you just go up into your oscillator and you pick the sample feature. Let's just restart here with the init preset. And you'll notice that there are factory sounds here and then factory non-tonal. Non-tonal is essentially going to be your, your drums, your loops. Again, drum loops here. Lots of cool different uh, options and your noises as well. Other cool feature, you can actually sample wavetables. Now you might be thinking, what the heck is that type of thing? Well, let's take a look here. Let's just take something like this. You might be thinking, okay, that's kind of lame. Like, why would I want to sample a wavetable? Well, it gives you flexibility and variation. Now, traditionally, when you think of a sample, you'll think of something like uh, a bass sound or like an instrument or like a voice, whatever it is. But in this case, you have this capability. And I'll show you in a moment how this can be used. But let's just take a look at quickly just some more standard samples so let's go to piano really nice what they call breathy piano-ish and already you have incredible sounds here that are were not possible before really on serum other than through a lot of manipulation now of course with any sampler it's not just enough to have your very basic factory tones or even your wavetables, which are cool, we need to have the ability to actually sample our own sound. So I'm going to take this, this sample, the sample of the saxophone maybe, and all you do is just drag and drop. Boom. Right there, you can just sample it like you had before. And it's a really amazing feature that you can turn into anything. So let's just stick with this sound maybe for now. And you might be thinking, okay, I have a saxophone here. Well, what can I do with it? Let's just take a look at some of these features. So if I were to right click here, you'll see all these kind of snap options here. And we're gonna go to the guide here to explain some of these. Remember the guide is our friend. It comes with the download of Serum 2. And this is on page 73 here. 
as you can see, all these snap features are essentially how it starts the point or ends the point of where you're pressing the note. These do make a difference. However, we're not going to get into all of these. I encourage you to read some to th some of these. They make subtle differences in basically where the, the point of the start of the loop starts or non-loop, of course, if it's a, uh, a one shot. So by default, it is a one shot, meaning it just plays once. Now you can loop it, of course, so you could do a forward loop. And what you what happens is it creates this marker here. And now I'm holding it down and it loops. And you think, okay, this is not very cool. Well, this could be completely adjusted to however you want. So it will still start at the same point. And as you can see, the higher the frequency, the, the faster it'll go. And you might be thinking, okay, still, this is not a very cool sound. Well, there are obviously implications to this since you might want to create some unique sounds from this. Now, it still kind of sounds saxophony, but we're really getting into something different here. And there's this feature here that I'll get into a minute, this crossfade feature that will come into play. But as you can see, there's different other types of loops as well. So let's take a look at this forward reverse loop maybe. And this one is self-explanatory, obviously. This goes back and forth, whereas the other one kind of started at the start. And as you can hear, this does have this kind of click to it. And this is where this button comes in, this nice crossfade. So let's slowly bring this in. All you do is left click. And it gets rid of that crossfade. Or sorry, it gets rid of that kind of clickiness. And we're going to now think of this sound a little bit differently. So let's go to the effects. Let's just turn on a basic effect of reverb and take a hall reverb and just crank it. And as you can hear, you kind of have a drone here. Can you make it bigger, longer decay? So just like that, you have a cool drone here that came from this saxophone note. So CRM2 really gives you that flexibility of using your samples in completely unique ways. Now let's go back and take one of these factory samples, piano, high, long tail. Really nice kind of cool piano sound here. And let's take a look at some more features. As you can see, when you right click, you get a whole bunch of different features. We talked about these snap features. Fade edges, as you can imagine, kind of fades out the ends of the samples and the beginnings of the samples if you want them to. The really cool other aspect here is the slicing feature. So we're going to do slice auto for now. And you'll see all of a sudden I can't play anything. And you see the C1 marker here. So my little MIDI keyboard that I have does not start at C1. And this is essentially the only note that you could play. So what you'll do here is right click and you can actually go to root note. So C2. And you might be thinking, okay, why can I only play C2? Well, if you drag this down, all of a sudden you'll see this, all these little lines here. This is slicing the sample. So you can see this is where it ends. And then the next note begins begins here. And this is would be C sharp two. And then I go to D. In this situation, it's not very practical because we have a very long tail here and it's not a very useful sample in that regard. So we have to go to something else. Say we take a different sound, hoping to find something a little bit longer. So I found this 
Lil Pad here. As you can see, all these are their own kind of unique slice sample and allowing you to use these in kind of unique ways, right? And if you had, say, like a vocal as well, you can slice up the vocal and you have different notes to it. Now, if we were to go back to this and go to slice manual, the biggest difference really is that you can move these around. You can't fully create your own. They're essentially going to be just movable by yourself like this. So it kind of automatically slices it and then you can move these on your own. Now, if we're going to take this even further, we can go into this clip function. So if I turn this on and go into it, you have a piano roll all of a sudden. So these notes that I was playing, you can put them into a whole piano roll. So say we have a beat of 120 BPM or something like that. We can even switch these up and go to one eighth note here, for example. We could record some notes in here. This is going to sound kind of lame, but it gives you an idea of what it is. So say you want to record it. So you get the idea. So you have kind of a sampled uh, sound. Say you have a vocal, you can really kind of do whatever you want with this and create your sounds just from here. You can then drag and drop everything into your playlist here, which is really cool. So that's just another easy way you could use these samples that you couldn't before. An even more basic function here is you can just change the length of this. So say you don't want this whole sound here. By moving these bars here, very simply just by clicking and dragging, you can start on a different spot, you can end on a different spot. So say you want here. So you have these this flexibility of just starting and stopping it wherever you want, basically. And as you can imagine, this gives you tons of flexibility in building your samples. Lastly, let's check out this hidden sampling feature in Serum 2. So although I'm in the wavetable section and I have this preset loaded up, this kind of cool atmospheric sound. Let's say I wasn't paying attention to what I just played. Well, now you could go right up here next to the CRM2 logo and all of a sudden this little box pops up and you could just drag right into your playlist and you have a sample of the sound you just played. So that's just a cool little feature that's often overlooked for CRM2. Of course, the great thing is you could just grab the sample again and put it right back into Serum as a sample. So there it is. Those are the cool new features of Serum 2 when it comes to sampling. Obviously, there's lots more to unpack. Stick around for the next episode when I look at multi-sampling and let me know what you thought of this video. Did I miss anything important for sampling? And what would you like to see in this guide series? Until next time, see you later.